Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.4 Beta 1 has been out for a little over a week at this point and there's even more new features to talk about. I've been using it full time on my iPhone 14 Pro Max so we'll talk about the experience, battery life, as well as some news that we can expect from future Apple products and iOS 16.5 as it's recently been spotted in some databases. Now the first thing is with iOS 16.4 Beta 1, Apple showed us that we'll no longer have the beta profile and what that means is you'll now actually have to sign up for the developer beta, be a developer, sign up for $99 per year, or become a public beta tester for free. So the beta profiles will no longer be relevant, we'll see this option here, and if you don't have either of those signed in, maybe you're not using the developer program and you're not signed up as a developer, it won't allow you to install it. So you'll actually need to have that tied to the Apple ID on the device you're using. And I can show you what it looks like if you actually don't have it signed in. So if we go to my photos here, this is sent over by a viewer, Noah, you can see here when he actually went to the developer beta, it says your Apple ID is not currently enrolled in the selected beta program. Join the Apple beta software program or Apple developer program to continue receiving future beta updates. Now, some people are seeing this. It's a it seems with beta 1 but with beta 2 this is what we expect we expect there to be a message if you're not signed up for one of those two programs now Siri gets a couple different voices depending on the actual language you have it set to so if we go down to Siri and search under Siri and search if we switch our language up to Arabic here We'll switch the language to Arabic, go back and go to Siri voice there's actually two new voices here so if we tap on voice 1 and then we'll tap on voice two. So you have a male and female voice. Let's do that again. And so those are two new voices, but you do have to have that set to Arabic. I'll just switch it back to where I'm from, the United States there, and let's talk about a couple other features. Now the next thing has to do with music. So if we go into Apple Music or the Music app, and within the Music app, if you tap on the three dots and you have the ratings option enabled within the music settings, you can see we now have Rate Song, which we've had for a while, but the icon has changed and it has sort of a half filled in star. So it's a five pointed star, only half filled in. Tap on it, you can rate a song, whatever you'd like. And that's something that's a little bit new. It's a small graphical change as well. Also within that same area, all of these different options here typically have a new animation. I showed that with play next and add to playlist. So if we tap on play next, you can see the new option at the bottom. If we tap on play last again, it's a new graphic at the bottom. That's just something a little bit new and seems to be on just about every option here with add playlist and more within Apple wallet. There's a new option here. So under latest card transactions, if we tap on that, we now have some sort options to show all payments, refunds and adjustments and purchases. So that's something a little bit new. And also if you have a discover card, there's something new as well, where it now has a virtual card enabled. So that's a virtual card number, just like Apple wallet uses for the Apple card. It doesn't give your retailer the actual card number. It gives them a virtual card number and changes that all the time. So it's no longer tied to an individual account. So that's something that's a little bit new and has been updated. Within shortcuts, there's an update as well. If we go to one of these different shortcuts, tap on the three dots, at the top you can see it says Set Stage Manager. If we tap on the icon, we now have the option to use the default icon. Of course, we can, can change this to different glyphs if we switch over, but we now have the stock app icon. So maybe this is an app store update, you'll have an app icon for that, or any other thing, whether that's settings, or you can just use the default one and choose a glyph of your choosing. So it's up to you, but that's something that's a little new if we go into safari and if you're using a text file this now adheres to whether or not you have dark mode set or not this is just a test website to show you different files but if we switch to dark mode you'll see the text file now switches to dark mode if we switch back it switches back so that's something that's been updated of course we have web push notifications now with 16.4 and i would expect more updates in the future with safari within photos 
you'll see here we have a landmark. This is the World Trade Center. It's a photo I took some time ago. And we have Lookup in the United States. However, not all locations around the world have this. And it's now seemingly available with iOS 16.4 Beta 1 in Ireland. So a viewer sent that in, and it seems to be new for a lot of people. Within the App Store, some people are seeing a new splash screen within Game Center. That's not something I'm seeing, but if you're seeing it, let me know in the comments below. Also, one good piece of news is it looks like Apple has updated at least some part of the camera algorithm. When you take a photo, it looks very similar now, at least for me, as to what you get when you take a screenshot or what you see is what you get. This is harder to tell outside in bright light, but it's easier to tell inside. So here's a photo inside as well and a screenshot. Let me know what you think about it. Do you think they've fixed this? Have you noticed any improvements? It definitely seems better. However, I don't know if it's 100% fixed at this point. Now, within the code, there's mention of a compute module that could be for the new Mac Pro. This is something that could either be for Mac Pro or the upcoming AR VR headset, as there's mentions of Reality OS all throughout iOS 16.4 code. So that's something that we could see in the near future. We are still waiting for that Mac Pro, but that's in the code of this update. Also this past week, if you were having issues with iOS and iCloud services, Apple had a huge outage the other day where they had a bunch of services offline. Everything from Apple Books to Apple Music and much more. So a lot of these services were offline and you couldn't access them. Now it didn't affect everyone, but it was affecting a lot of people around the world. So it's been back up. It only took probably an hour to fix everything, maybe a little bit longer. But I also mentioned this on Twitter in real time once they fixed it and when the issue was happening as well. Now, one thing I wanted to mention that seems to be fairly significant is with Apple Watch. Apple Watch is something that has been great for health for quite some time. And originally, Apple's been working on a blood glucose monitor to be built into the watch. However, they've been working on this for years and it's just kind of been stuck. It looks now to be that they've been making further progress and they've made notable progress according to Mark Gurman. It will still take a while to bring it to market, but that's a game changer for people that have diabetes and need to measure their blood glucose levels all day long. So that would be non-invasive just on your wrist hopefully they can do this maybe there's some other adapter that goes with it but either way that would be huge for any diabetics or anyone that just needs to measure their blood glucose levels regularly at the time of filming this video it's steve jobs birthday you can see tim cook tweeted about him saying people with the most to teach live like they have the most to learn and steve loved learning he was the most curious person i've ever met which made him the best teacher i've ever known happy birthday my friend so that was a nice little tribute to him now, one thing I wanted to show you as well, and I don't know if anyone else has seen this before, but the millimeter wave antenna on the side of the iPhone appears to be glass based off of this photo from Reddit. Someone accidentally shattered it and it looks like it actually broke. Now that would make sense as it's easy for different radio wave transmissions to go through glass, but let me know if you've ever seen this before. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you've actually broken that before. Now, iPhone 15, while we don't know tons about it just yet, as far as any major features such as we got with the Dynamic Island, we do have a good idea of what it looks like. And now there's sources saying it could come in dark red and light blue. So that's something I would welcome. We haven't seen a product red edition of iPhone for a while, and that's something I really like. The 8 Plus had one, and we've seen other different variants of them, and then sometimes later in the year they would release them as well. I would love to see maybe next year have a special edition color. Let me know if you would pick up dark red or maybe a different blue, or just maybe they should stick with this space gray and white and just keep it simple with silver or white or whatever you want to call that. Now this week, Apple stopped signing iOS 16.3. It means you can no longer downgrade to iOS 16.3. You can only downgrade to 16.3.1. They also stopped signing older versions where you could download to iOS 15. So that's not going to be as easy anymore. And with iOS 16.3.1, there was a security update in it. There's actually a couple of them, but then Apple updated it again recently this week with an additional security update. So let's take a look at that. And on Apple's security website, if we go down to iOS 16.3 and iPadOS 16.3.1, Apple actually added an additional entry. And there we go, it took a moment to load. We have kernel security and webkit so they added one with security and you can see the impact is processing a maliciously crafted certificate may lead to a denial of service to fix it a denial of service issue was addressed with improved input validation 
All of these security updates are fairly major as the kernel is the underlying code of iOS and WebKit is the underlying code to Safari. So I would definitely update if you haven't already. However, we're all probably running different versions and many of us are running iOS 16.4. Now we do know that Apple is testing iOS 16.5 already. With betas, typically Apple gets to work on them early and different websites are now seeing this in their website statistics. So we know they're working on it. However, so far we haven't seen iOS 16.3.2. So we may not have a small security update. Apple just may be working on 16.4 going forward. So no sign of that on any websites, at least that we know of so far. Now this week, I would expect iOS 16.4 beta 2. Typically, Apple has a two week schedule or every other week when there's a new beta out, usually the first few betas are every other week. Then we'll see probably beta two, beta three, and then after beta three, typically we'll have weekly updates. However, I would expect iOS 16.4 to release to the public typically in late March, maybe early April. We don't really know 100% at this point, but that's typically what Apple does. And then of course, they'll move on to iOS 16.5. Then we'll see iOS 17 beta one, usually in early June at WWDC or the worldwide developer conference. That's usually what Apple does every year. And so we could see beta one there with a final release in September around the time of the iPhone launch. So that's usually what we have every year for many of you that have been asking me again this coming week. I would expect iOS 16.4 beta two, and maybe even something else, maybe a few app updates. We don't really know just yet. Also iOS 17 continues to be confirmed as a small update, whether that's a small redesign and then just security or stability overall, we don't know, but it seems like it's going to be very, very minor this year as Apple prepares to introduce its AR VR headset. So that could be a good thing, or maybe it won't be. Hopefully it gets much, much more stable. Now, overall, the experience with iOS 16.3.1 and 16.4 seem to be okay. 16.3.1 seems to have one major issue, and I'm seeing this from multiple people, is that LTE disappears or just your cell phone signal in general disappears and calls would get cut off mid midway when you're on a phone call. So it could just drop and not work properly. I'm not seeing that personally, but some people have mentioned that. In fact, multiple people have mentioned that, although 16.4 seems to be better for me. As far as 16.4 for an early beta, it's great. So far, I've had no swipe home stutter. So let me drop the volume here, push play, swipe home. It's still super fast. After a week of using it, typically it would slow down. So far, it hasn't slowed down at all. There's been no freezes or lockups. It seems to be much more stable than before. And in general, it's much, much better. In Apple Books, it seems they've fixed an issue, specifically if you have increased contrast enabled. Before, oftentimes the menu options and the close button just wouldn't disappear if that was enabled. This has been fixed and it's finally gone if you're reading a book with that turned on. Now, as far as the bad things about 16.4, well, there's reports of CarPlay not working properly and disconnecting. There's also reports of Wi-Fi passwords disappearing and notifications sometimes are still square when you go into them and then they'll sort of round after you go into them. That's an odd bug we've seen over and over. So we need to make sure we report that in the feedback app if you haven't already. That's something Apple should have fixed by now. Maybe they're just not aware and not experiencing it themselves. But there is still some issues with connectivity for me with Bluetooth in my car. Sometimes it just doesn't work right. The album art will actually show something different that's not on my screen here. And that happens in multiple vehicles and they're different types of vehicles as well. So this seems to be an issue with Bluetooth on the iPhone itself. So that could be affecting CarPlay with it disconnecting and disconnections of different calls as well. Now, as far as overall battery life, let's go into settings, go down to battery, battery health and charging. I'm down to 98% battery health. You can see the overall cycles here on the left as we keep track of this every week. And it seems to be okay. It is getting me through a day. Let's go back in here, wait for it to load. It is getting me through a day and seems to be okay. It's not amazing by any means. We had four hours and four minutes of screen active time today and seven hours and 53 minutes of screen idle time with about 60% battery usage. So not really great. Only about three hours of screen active time yesterday. A lot of background activity, even though that's turned off for most apps. So there's still some issues to be worked out here. As far as performance, well, I mentioned already, I haven't had any freezing or lockups going into different apps as fast. If we go into maybe 
let's go into Apple TV. Things seem to load reasonably. Of course, it depends on your, your connection here overall. Things are smooth, ProMotion is smooth, and it seems to be performing really well, whether that be this phone or the iPhone 11 in the distance there. Older phones seem to be doing just fine. As far as the overall heat of the device, well, we're outside. I'm in full brightness, as you can see here, for the entire duration of this video, and the phone is barely warm. So that's good news, being full brightness, showing you different things on the phone, it seems to be just fine. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the YouTube community poll and some of your comments. Now at the time of this video, there's over 9,800 votes and 16% of you are on the beta, iOS 16.4 beta 1, 68% are on iOS 16.3.1, 5% are on 16.3, 4% are on 15.7.3 or older, and 6% are on something else, whether that be iOS 14 or Android or something else. So thanks to everyone that voted here. Now let's take a look at your comments. Lidry said, feels better than 16.3.1. I'm running it on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Battery life seems absolutely okay, few bugs. While streaming radio and Apple Music to my AirPods Pro first gen, putting them down to the case and then getting them back to my ears will not resume streaming. Also, it can't be resumed by tapping the play button. The only thing that helps is to reopen the app and start listening to the radio. CarPlay is disconnecting and reconnecting from time to time. Vasile says, hi Aaron, I'm running iOS 16.4 beta 1 on my 13 Pro Max. So far, overall, it's been great. I noticed a battery improvement and a stable connectivity, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The new refinements are very welcomed. Cheers. Zomboy4313 said, I'm running iOS 16.4 beta 1 on my SE second gen. I can't say that anything has really changed. Battery life might be a tiny bit better, but still pretty bad on this model. Photo shuffle doesn't work for me, and spotlight search on the lock screen instantly closes if you swipe up prematurely. Doesn't happen anywhere else. Very jarring and easy to find. Love your videos and hope iOS 17 isn't as buggy as this. Camper Nikki says, iOS 16.4 and having some HomeKit issues despite not touching anything in HomeKit. Haven't switched to the new architecture or anything, but my location and schedules automations aren't working, and there's quite a delay for HomeKit devices, even thread devices of about 10 seconds. And so that's everything with iOS 16.3.1 and iOS 16.4 Beta 1. Let me know your overall experience in the comments below and what device you're using. I'd love to hear from you. And if you found any other features, let us know in the comments as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.